Hey how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we are gonna see, what if Naruto rage out using Kurama on Eno. This is part 1, and before getting into video. I request you to check the author of this fanfic, and show some love and support. Name of the story is. Village Hidden Among the Waves by, Whale Shark, do check it out. All details in description. And if you want next part of this series. Please leave a like share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Many villagers and ninja were waiting around the main gate of Konoha. Tsunade was there as was Sakura, Shino, Ino, Tenten, Gai, Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma, and some of the council. The original Ino Shiko Cho team was there, as well as Aruka and the Ichiraku man. They were all waiting for the rescue team to return and bring them their Ichiha back. There they are. Shouted a guard. Everyone turned their attention to the path outside the gate. A couple figure S came into view, but you could not tell who it was yet. I hope it's Asuke Sakura thought to herself. When the figures arrived it was Gara and his siblings. Gara had sand floating behind him carrying Kiba and Akamaru on one, Chaogi on another, Lee fully enclosed in one, and Niji was on the last. Shikamaru was draped over to Mari's shoulder. Who is in the worst shape? Tsunade said in a voice that let everyone know she was Hokage and she was in charge. Gara replied in a flat voice. They all are suffering chakra depletion. Niji has a large wound in his left shoulder and multiples others. Chaogi has severe chakra depletion. And Kiba has many wounds, he is in the best shape of them, but they all need treatment. I stepped forward. What about Lee how bad are his wounds? Lee is fine, he was just drunk. What, who gave him alcohol? Tsunade smashed him over the head, effectively shutting him up. Shikamaru lifted his head. Chaoza, Chaogi took all three pills. The Ino Shiko Cho team all dashed forward. They knew what that meant and the dangers with it. Quick give him this as Shikaku pulled a pill from his pouch. The pill was given to Chaogi, and he swallowed with the help of Anoichi, relaxing his throat muscles. He will be fine now he just needs some rest, besides he's already up. Shikaku said with a smile as Chaogi opened his eyes to see his father and his team. Tsunade and the others began working on the rest of them. Shikamaru had been set on the ground, and Tamari was helping him sit. Kankuro had sat on the other side of Gara as he was still standing with his arms crossed. But where is Sasuke, you guys were supposed to get him, what happened to him? Sakura screamed. The villagers also began to murmur about their Ichiha. The older ninja were more concerned about Naruto though. Well what happened, you guys failed didn't you? Sakura was now furious. Sand quickly surrounded Sakura, and before anyone could react Sakura was covered to her head with sand. If you do not silence yourself I will do it for you. Gara replied. Besides, Naruto went after him Kankuro said while fixing one of his puppets. The yeah, right, like Naruto could beat Sasuke Sakura said. Bakashi just slapped his forehead. And the others sighed. Sakura was about to continue when she felt the sand around her tight know where it began to hurt. I was not kidding, whether we be allies or not, I owe Naruto more than this whole village. Gar replied still looking towards the path. X x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x x one hour later X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X was now stabilized with help from Tsunade and Shizun, Lee was on Guy's shoulders smiling. Chaogi was next to Shikamaru talking, and Kiba was being tended to by Hinata, and Shino was talking with him. The rest of the ninja were still waiting, and the villagers were confident about their Ichiha returning. I see something coming. Shouted the guard again. This time it was Naruto with Sasuke knocked out and in terrible shape over his shoulder with tightly bound ropes. Naruto was just as bruised and injured. I knew he could do it, he is after all the most surprising ninja of Konoha. Whispered some Jounin. The villagers were disgusted. Naruto drops Sasuke on the ground here you are Sakura-chan, just like I promised Naruto was too tired to even scratch the back of his head, so he just stood there with his arms at his side. Naruto quickly have some ramen as Tuechi gave him a large bowl that was still hot. Naruto began to eat the bowl. What Naruto look what you did to him, he's almost dead you could have killed him what were you thinking? Sakura was screaming. She suddenly knocked the bowl out of his hands and punched him straight in the face. Naruto fell to the ground and put his hand to his face. Why did you do this to him? Sakura cha. Naruto tried to say but was cut off. You probably used that red chakra to beat him, there is no way you are strong enough as she kicked him. 
All of the ninja were pissed now and waiting to see what happened. The villagers were loving it. Ino approached Sakura Sakura what are you doing, he just brought Sasuke back after he was captured and this is how you treat him. Ino yelled. Ino had lost her love for Sasuke and had began to admire Naruto as well as some of the other ninja. What are you talking about Ino, I'll bet he didn't do anything and the rest of them did all the work. Sakura said as she moved to kick Naruto again. Sand exploded from all around and covered Sakura lifting her of the ground as Gara walked between Naruto and her. If you make another move on Uzumaki I will kill you, allies or not. Sakura let a laugh escape you are just mad because Sasuke beat you just like in the Chunin exams. For your information, this Ichiha was completely useless in his attempt to stop me. Gara paused and a smirk grew on his face. Naruto could probably take on this whole village if he had to. You're lying. You just don't want to admit defeat to Sasuke the villagers began to yell towards Gara. Gara once again had his bored look on his face as he continued. You think I lie, well then let me tell you about it. The ninja were now intently listening. He first was able to place a exploding tag where my armor was thinnest where the Ichiha could not even touch me. Uzumaki created over 2000 shadow clones that beat me to a pulp before I transformed. When I did transform he summoned some frog named Gamabunta that matched me in power. The ninja were now amazed and held respect for Naruto, seeing as only two people have been able to summon the boss frog. Jurei of the legendary Sanin and the Yandame. There is more, when I used 100% of my power, Yuzumaki called on even more strength and transformed not only himself but also Gamabunta into a nine-tailed fox when they could not take hold of me. The villagers were now scared and some of the older ninja at the mention of the QB. He then beat me with a headbutt to the forehead. Gara replied as he dropped Sakura to the ground and looked over at Naruto. The villagers still thought he was lying, so they needed to expose him somehow. The villagers began to yell at Naruto calling him demon and wishing death upon him, but were quickly silenced by Tsunade and the Anbu. Naruto still had his hand to his face where Sakura punched him. The rest of the rookie nine and guys team were now in front of Naruto, except for Sasuke and Sakura. It was eerily silent. Naruto stood. His face was now full of anger and fury, but it turned to a smile. Then I am leaving. The villagers cheered and the ninja were confused. I can't believe that I go out and capture the Ichiha who left of his own free will and even put Ichidori through my chest he glanced at Kakashi and then bring him back and then get screamed at for doing it. Naruto said with sarcasm. Everyone was confused. He left of his own free will to Orochimaru because he thought the leaf was weak. Naruto laughed. Well I guess I showed him. Well like I said, I am leaving this village and Bachan, if you send who. I won't brat, but you better come visit. Naruto smiled well I am off to start my own village. Everyone was shocked except for Tsunade. Anyone want to come? I will scream to Echi as he hurriedly rushed with AM2 behind Naruto. I would lose business if you left, and besides who want to live in a place where they hate someone for just living as to Echi glared at the villagers. Although I am going to need some help getting all my pots and utensils. I got it covered, and Naruto created 30 shadow clones to go get all the stuff from Ichiraku. I will go as well, traditions or not, Niji said as he joined Naruto. We are coming Gara said flatly as he and his siblings joined Naruto. Are we gonna be allies with Leaf? Shikamaru asked. But the ninja yes, villagers maybe Naruto replied smirking. I'm in then. Me too. If they go I'm coming, Ino said as she glanced at Naruto. Taugi, Ino, and Shikamaru moved too. He'll need a lot of help doing what he wants replied Shikamaru with a lazy tone. And of course we'll visit said Chaugi in response to the look their parents were giving him. You dare betray the Kanoha. You are all Jenin and Chunin said a council member stepping forward. They are going whether you like it or not, and if anyone wants to stop them they have to go through me, Tsunade said facing the crowd. Then Ten, Kiba, Shino and Hinata moved as well. We will be in touch father was all Shino said as he moved. I sensei, I wish to go along with my friends, but do not wish to leave you, what should I do? Lee you go, be with your friends guy screamed I will come back sensei Lee said as he and guy began their ritual. Tsunade walked forward. Brat you better not get killed, Shikamaru take care of him. Troublesome. I'll be fine botch and Naruto stepped forward and gave her a huge hug. I'll see you again, tell the pervy sage too. They all began walking away from the village as soon as the clones returned carrying all of the Raymond equipment and supplies. Naruto was in the lead with Shikamaru at his side and Chaugi and Niji were being carried on stretchers by some clones. Everyone else was in a group behind them just walking along. Ino had moved towards the front and got as close to Naruto as she could before making it obvious. So, Naruto where do you plan on going? Or are we starting a village from scratch? Shikamaru asked. Naruto put on one of his biggest smiles. Have you ever been to the land of waves? Everyone was walking the path towards wave country. 
Naruto was in the lead, and Shikamaru and Shino were at his sides. Naruto had created four clones, and they were carrying Niji and Chaogi, and 30 clones, carrying the Ichiraku supplies and equipment Chaogi was awake now, and conversing with Tuechi and AM about foods and recipes. Then Ten, Tamari and Ino were talking about who knows what, and Hinata was tending to a now wake Niji. Kiba and Akamaru were jumping through the trees playing tag, followed by an energetic Lee. Gara and Kenkuro were bringing up the rear. Naruto was happy inside because for once he was thinking about his own village, a new village, one free of prejudice and hate towards people. He silently vowed that he would make it a joyful place for all its inhabitants. Naruto couldn't believe that all of his friends were coming along with him, the dead last. Naruto knew that he had proven himself, but was still overjoyed about it all. Naruto was wearing a fox smile and looked to Shikamaru. So Shikamaru how come you decided to come? Everyone stopped their own conversations and looked towards the front. Shikamaru felt everyone's eyes on him and sighed troublesome. Well the village council has been getting ahead of itself because of Tsunade being the new Hokage. They feel that she is not doing a good job and is going to try and get her out of power and elect Danzo as the new Hokage. But that's only part of the village council right? Ino asked. Of course, the clan heads of the Hayuga, Akimichi, Abram, Nara, Yamanaka, and Inyazuka all disagree, they know of Tsunade's skill as a warrior, and feel that she is the most qualified for the position, besides if Danzo was chosen he would be a weak Hokage, especially with only one arm Shikamaru continued. True, he has been trying to gain power ever since the Sandame Mishino interjected. And how do you know that Shino? Ten Ten asked. My father keeps me informed about the council and village matters, he says what happens if they die, who then will take on responsibility for the village. Wow Shino, that's the most I've ever heard you say in a week, Naruto said chuckling. Everyone else joined in and Shino smiled although no one could see it. Everyone was bitten by a bug that caused them to immediately stop laughing and get rid of the bug. As they were trying the bugs flew back to Shino and he kept walking. Nice move Shino Naruto said still laughing. Oh and Shikamaru you never really gave us a reason that you left. Ino said jabbing him in the stomach. Troublesome, I was hoping you would forget, Tsunade kind of gave it to me as a mission to take care of Naruto. Shikamaru said as he jumped behind Ino. The old hag did what Naruto yelled and charged Shikamaru, but stopped when he saw that he was behind Ino. Ino looked him in the eyes and blushed as she quickly looked away and turned Naruto around. Let's keep going I would like to get there today, I have never been to the land of waves, Ino said pushing Naruto forward. Okay, okay, we are going Naruto started walking again. Well that is Shikamaru's reason what about the rest of you? Naruto said as he turned his head backward. I did it to get free of the Hayuga clan rules that separate the houses, I will create a new Hayuga that are not divided, and I'm sure Hinata would help, besides Tsunade removed the seal when I was being healed from the last battle, meaning no one had power over me, Niji called from his stretcher. I came for the new ideas and besides my father kind of suggested it. He said I could grow stronger and that if this village were to blossom, it would need help. You're the strongest fighter among us Naruto, but probably the worst in organizing and handling things. Shino said still smiling from the bug bites. Haha, <laughs> I guess you got me there, Naruto said smiling while scratching his head. You idiot Ino said as she bonked him over the head. Naruto laughed more and jogged ahead to escape Ino. I wasn't done with you yet Ino screamed as she took off after him. Naruto saw this and took off sprinting. Ugo Naruto Kiba called, and Hinata smacked him in the back of the head. Five minutes and Ino will be dragging Naruto back 10-10 said laughing. Ten minutes, Naruto is kind of fast you know Niji called. Want to bet on it? 10-10 said. Sure 10-10 Niji said smiling. Fine, but you are lucky you are still injured 10-10 said, struggling to contain herself from smacking Niji. So what does the winner get? Niji asked. Being a slave for the winner for two hours 10-10 said smirking. You're on. Less than 30 seconds Tuechi said smiling evilly. No way Naruto is not that slow Chaogi said. Everyone was now watching the bet. You're on Niji and Ten Ten chorused. I never said that Tuechi said as he moved to the front of the group and cupped his hands over his mouth. Pre Iramin his deep voice bellowed. Everyone looked ahead and saw a large cloud of dust kick up, and then everyone was amazed to see Naruto standing there with Ino in his arms bridal style and her arms around her neck. Where's the Raymon? He said as if in a frenzy. Everyone was either smirking at the predicament that they were in or mouths gaping from Naruto's speed, and Kiba was about to say something, but was interrupted. Buo, score one for the old man, Tuechi sang as he danced around the group, and Am chuckled as the rest were staring with wide eyes, as they had never seen anyone move that fast. Seems I know Naruto no don't I Tuechi said rubbing it in. I can't believe that we are his slaves 10-10 whined, and Niji just smacked his forehead. What was I some kind of bet? Naruto said still holding Ino. Yep and you lost it for me Naruto. Niji said. Oops sorry Niji Naruto said. 
Let's keep moving, Shino said as he started in the lead. Everyone walked by and Naruto turned to follow until he realized he was still carrying Ino oh sorry Ino, want me to put you down? Naruto asked. Ino thought about it I am actually kind of tired, would you mind carrying me? Ino left out that she was waiting for a day at the gate for them to return from their mission, thus she was exhausted. No problem, but would you rather be on my back? Naruto said trying to be a gentleman. No I am fine here she said and laid her head against his chest and closed her eyes drifting off to sleep. When Naruto caught up to the rest of them, Ino was asleep, and everyone turned to look at them, and the boys smirked while the girls awed over it, and Kiba and Kankuro both made catcalls which earned them another smack from Hinata and Tamari. Shikamaru still wanted to get the reasons for the rest of them, leaving broke the silence well what about you Lee? Lee looked down to the ground sad and you guys are my only real friends besides Guy sensei and some of the Jounin, and if you left I would be all alone. Everyone was saddened at what Lee had said until Naruto broke the silence. Don't worry Lee, I've got the same reason, you all are my best friends, Naruto said which cheered everyone up. Tuichi smiled for even though he was a Raymond chef, he had great observation skills. For you can't live in a village full of ninja and not pick up some skills. And he was witnessing one of Naruto's many outstanding talents. Okay Chaogi what about you? Tuichi said changing the conversation. I couldn't leave Ino and Shikamaru they are like family to me. And after that mission when we risk our lives for Sasuke and then bring him back and then get looked down upon for doing so, besides a new village would be cool. Everyone recalled the events from the village and how the rescuers were shunned. Okay, 1010 what about you? Naruto called. She looked at Niji quickly and then back forward, there has to be some women in this village to keep the men in line, she was glad she made this up because she really didn't have a reason, except for wanting to be with Niji. Everyone shared a laugh at the joke she had made. Tiba. Well, new territory and like Chaogi said we got belittled for doing a mission to retrieve the damage ahead, plus here at this village I would be one of the strongest. Akamari yipped in agreement. Wow we are going through the list now Niji pointed out. Anata, what about you? Niji asked. Um well, I don't like the Hayuga laws, and I um, am trying to prove a point that Hayuga do not need just the Hayuga style and Byukagan to be good ninja. Also I would like to create a new style free from the other Hayuga Hinata managed without stuttering. What about you three Gara, Kankuro and Tamari Naruto said, forgetting that they were there as they had been quiet most of the trip. Tamari was looking at Shikamaru when Naruto started talking and was caught looking away. I agree with 1010 someone has to keep you all in line, especially Kankuro. Kankuro just looked at everyone well I had nothing else to do, so why not this made everyone laugh if he was just doing this because he was bored. I'll bet Gara made you come Naruto said trying to contain his laughter. Yep Gara said which caused everyone to laugh and Kankuro to go after Gara, but was caught up in a ball of sand. You know this is not fair at all, Gara never gets hit or any of that Kankuro whined. That's because he doesn't cause trouble like you Tamari pointed out smacking him again, besides I can actually get to Gara without his sand protecting him. Tamari moved towards Gara, and he quickly made hand seals to encase himself in a ball of sand under his control. Well except when he does that. After everyone had finished any other explanations of why they left and there was silence for a minute, Shino started a new subject. Okay so Naruto how are we doing this? Well my first real mission was here to wave country to protect Azuna, an expert bridge builder, and I met a nice family that took care of us while we were here. They used to be a poor country, but now I think they are a lot better since the bridge was finished. And I think that their village will be the perfect spot for our new ninja village, it has lots of woods, a large river and some small mountains, plus the ocean. Also we will be able to disguise ourselves as ordinary people if the need ever arrive, seeing as there is no evidence that it will be a ninja village, will keep us safe for the first part. Wow Naruto that actually made sense for once Kiba said. That was actually a very good reason and had lots of advantages, and this man Tazuna, he will help with the new buildings I guess. Shikamaru asked. Wow you really are a genius Shikamaru Naruto said smiling. Well anyway I was thinking that for the first couple months or so we focus on getting the area secured, designed out and built. I mean we all can't stay at Izuna's house, we will have to build our own. And we need food and probably need to divert the river closer to the village. That would be great for water, and there was lots of fish in wave country, Naruto replied in a semi-serious tone. Well you have it all thought out for once, not just charging into something fists raised, Niji said smirking. Okay so that's what we got to do first I guess then 1010 said clapping her hands. Wait a sec we will need a cool headband symbol. Kiba said waving his hands. Only you Kiba would think of that, only you Shino muttered. Everyone stopped and thought about it after a laugh. I guess a simple design of a few waves would work, easily distinguishable and easy to carve. Shino said. Well there we go, that settled Chaogi said. Naruto thought it was time to show that he was truly capable of being a leader, and that he is in charge of this project. 
Okay well I think the Chaogi and old man Ichiraku should be in charge of food. Hinata, Kiba, Kankuro and Shino in charge of scouting the area and securing a boundary. Ten Ten, Tamari, Ino and AM should be in charge of housing and design, seeing as they would complain the most. And me, Gara and Lee will divert the river and get wood. Niji whenever he gets better will do whatever needs help. Okay sounds good Naruto, but that stuff will take a long, long time. Ten Ten pointed out. Not for Naruto Uzumaki Naruto exclaimed. And how are you planning that? Tamari asked. Naruto smiled and said ever heard of shadow clones. Shikamaru, Shino and Niji all understood and Shino began to explain. Naruto has massive stamina and chakra. He can create over 2000 shadow clones that would last all day and all he would need would be some food and rest and he could do it again the next day. This gives us 2000 manpower each day, so we will be done quickly. Shino finished. Also as he said, we are in charge, so basically we are leading an army of Naruto's, Niji's smile grew even bigger, and to think that every time he does this his chakra will increase. Exactly, Naruto will definitely be the leader. His chakra right now is double all of the rest of us but together. By the time we are done I am guessing that he will have so much chakra that very few in this land will compare to him. Man Naruto, you are going to be unbeatable. Kiba said. Naruto smiled and kept walking. He looked down to see Ino still sleeping peacefully in his arms. He enjoyed the feeling, he felt happy. Ino stirred and snuggled closer to him. Shikamaru saw this and leaned close looks like you got something for her eh? Naruto blushed and leaned back to Shikamaru I could say the same for you and Tamari this cased Shikamaru to look away and Naruto jumped behind everyone else. Naruto smiled knowing that Shikamaru had a thing for Tamari as well as Kiba and Hinata, obviously Niji and Ten Ten, and he was thinking about Shino and Aim. Nice Gaki, it's about time you got a vixen. Naruto heard QB yell in his mind. Naruto sighed and closed his eyes and then found himself in front of QB. What do you want Fox? What I can't have a conversation with my jailer. QB said smiling with his massive jaws. Well, you actually got a point there. But still what do you want? Well as you know I can see what happens out there and the idea of you starting a ninja village is weird but can work, especially with the bloodlines and abilities you have with you. Naruto just now realized that he had some of the strongest bloodlines from all over the ninja world with him, and they were starting a new village. Anyways, I was wondering when you were going to tell them about me and all. You should not keep secrets from them. I guess you are right, I will have to tell them somehow, what way do you think is the easiest? QB smiled and Naruto ducked to avoid being hit in the head by something. What was that for? Naruto screamed. To test your reflexes, no you idiot it was a summoning scroll now go get it. Naruto quickly went and gathered the scroll and brought it back to in front of QB. So what do I do, same as the toads? Yes, just think of foxes or toads whichever you want to summon at the time. So Naruto signed his name and blood as well as his hand on the scroll and wrapped it up and slid it back to QB. Cool foxes and toads now all right man this village is going to be unstoppable. Naruto I also have something else for you. This seal is converting my chakra into yours, which will make you have almost limitless chakra. You will need to work on chakra control a lot more okay. And after it absorbs my chakra I will go back to the demon realm, but you will still be able to summon me. Hey you aren't going to go all destructive on me or anything right? Of course, here let's make a blood seal on it, this way you can prove it to any of you elders that want to know. QB wrote it out on paper and signed it by slicing his paw and signing in blood, he slid the scroll to Naruto and he did the same. After they were done Naruto put the scroll in his pocket. Alright, I will miss all the annoying conversations we had though when you leave. Sure you will, but you still have two more years to deal with me. Alright then QB I am going to tell them. Naruto turned to leave but turned back around. Wait a sec, can you turn into a smaller fox, because you walking around all massive like that won't help and will give us away. Of course I can do that, you don't think I am a demon lord for nothing. Now get out. Naruto came back into the real world laughing and everyone was looking at him. What is so funny? Kiba asked. Nothing, just a joke I remembered, but I have something very important to tell all of you Naruto woke Ino up and set her down next to him. Well, you all remember the stories of how the Yandame defeated the QB in battle and killed it, but also lost his life doing so. Everyone nodded but were confused as to what he was talking about. Well, QB was a demon lord and cannot be killed. So Yandame did the next best thing, he sealed it. Niji now realized what he was saying as he had seen the red chakra in the Chunin exams. And he had to seal in into a newborn baby, seeing as their chakra coils are still developing and could contain the demon lord. So I was chosen as I was born on the same day QB attacked the village Naruto finished as he lifted his shirt and channeled chakra to his stomach to show them the seal. Whoa, so that's where your power comes from? Kenkuro asked. 
Ara interjected no, the power of the demon is easily identified, the power that Naruto has is from hard work. QB's power is only when you see the red chakra. Well how do you know that? Ten Ten asked. Ara smiled I also have a demon lord sealed inside me. Everyone was now confused and wondered how this happened. But you are just his jailer not him right? Hinata nervously asked. Of course, we are two separate beings. Let me show you Naruto said smirking as he jumped back from the group. Summoning Jutsu a huge cloud of smoke erupted and everyone shielded their ears when they heard QB talk. Ooh oh, about time I got out, this feels good. QB said stretching oh yeah my name is QB, the nine-tailed fox and strongest of all demon lords. Naruto noted from atop his head that he was twice the size of Gamabunta. Hey QB, do you think I should tell Gamabunta? Yay, you should want to do it now. Only if you don't attack him even if he attacks you. Fine. Everyone was amazed to see Naruto talking to the demon lord and did not know he was going to summon Gamabunta. Naruto jumped off of QB's head and was falling to the ground. Naruto what are you doing you idiot as Eno started to run hoping she would catch him before he hit the ground. Eno was stopped by sand at her ankles and around her waist. Just watch and Gara set her down next to him. Summoning Jutsu. And a cloud of smoke corrupted again this time half the size of QB. Ureya is that you? Or is it the idiot? Hey Gamabunta it's me, Naruto I want you to meet an old friend, but you can't attack. Gamabunta finally saw QB through the smoke. But how did he get out, the seal the Yande made was unbreakable. Gamabunta said worried as he pulled his dagger. I let him out. Naruto said. But why did you do that, he will kill us all now. Through a summoning jutsu Naruto finished and the ground started to shake. Everyone looked over to see QB laughing and rolling around on the ground. Ah oh man you should have seen you face Bunta, ahahahahaha, you were terrified. Not good Naruto thought. Damn brat scaring me and stuff, alright brat I am out of here, see you later, Gamabunta said as he disappeared leaving Naruto to plummet to the ground. Damn it. He did it again. I got you brat, QB said as one of his tails caught him and set him back down next to his friends. Thanks QB, now will you get down before someone sees you and alerts Konoha. Fine, fine he finished as he erupted in another cloud of smoke and when it cleared a small two-tailed fox was sitting on Naruto's shoulder. Well everyone, my name is QB so please stop gawking at me. Oh was so cute the girls yelled as they took QB and began hugging him and petting him. Naruto help me, I am going to die. Naruto meanwhile was on the floor laughing holding his sides. Some demon lord huh? Ahahahaha. <laughs> All the guys started to walk again, except for Naruto who went to get QB. Okay, that's enough I don't think he likes it, besides the rest of them kept walking, Naruto said as he moved to the center and bent down allowing QB to jump back on his shoulder. The girls fed and ran to catch up to the rest except for Ino. QB whispered to Naruto is this the one you like, cause she doesn't seem that smart. Naruto blushed and started running again as Ino chased QB who had dug his claws into Naruto's jacket, forcing Naruto to run. The rest of the group was walking again and saw Naruto run by with a laughing QB, followed by an angry Ino. Anyone want to make a bet? Tuichi said evilly. No AM said as she bonked him over the head. After Naruto had returned this time being dragged by Ino and QB still laughing came jumping down from the tree line, apparently avoiding harm from Ino. The group was still a day's walk from Wave, so they decided to camp here for the night. Alright I'll get some dinner and wood, be back in 15 minutes. Naruto said before he made his favorite seal. Mass Shadow Clone. 100 shadow clones poofed into existence and everyone only had a second to look before they dashed off into the forest, their tasks already in mind. So that's what you meant by a lot Kiba said as he and Akamaru began to push the twigs and leaves away for a suitable sleeping area. No he could do that probably 20 more times and still not even tire, he has amazing stamina that is probably more than Lee's Shikamaru said as he laid down next to a tree and looked up at the sky. Tamari sat to his left and Kenkuro was next to Tamari. Crap no one brought tents did they? Ten Ten called as she imagined sleeping on the forest floor with nothing but the clothes she has on. Man good point Ten Ten, no one has anything, we kind of forgot all that a Kanohe Ino pointed out feeling bad because they were ninja and were supposed to remember this kind of stuff. Everyone stopped all of their talking and looked at Gara who had closed his eyes and made a hand seal and was muttering something. The ground before them began to shake and sand exploded from the ground and became a large mass hovering right above them. He made another seal and the sand formed into a large two-story house with open windows and doorways. The chimney sprouted from the top and the whole structure was pushed up by two inches of sand from the bottom to keep it safe from water. Ara walked inside and said lazily, it is going to rain and I do not like getting wet and there is room for 20 people and we have less than that so anyone is welcome to join me. What Gara? how come you never did this on any missions and I had to sleep in the trees? 
Kankuro protested. Because it never rained Gara called flatly. Good point Kankuro said immediately ending his rant. A storm overhead was thundering very loudly and the lightning was illuminating the entire area. All the Naruto clones that went to get wood and food returned, the food clones with some berries and rabbit and even some wild vegetables. Kiba skinned and cleaned the rabbits and Gara made a fire for them. Everyone noticed that Gara was sitting close to the fire and avoiding any rain possible that fell through the windows. Naruto and QP still hadn't returned. Ino was sitting near the doorway waiting. Kiba was about to say something, but this time Shino stopped him before he could. Tuechi had started to make rabbit stew. Um Gara, if you really don't like the rain that much, why don't you make a covering or something to keep the rain out, you know like a diagonal or something Kankuro asked in confusion. Gara looked at the windows and then smacked himself in the forehead. I can't believe I am listening to an idea Kankuro suggested, but a good idea it is. Sand came up from the floor and covered the windows stopping the wind and rain from entering, but still allowing airflow. Where do you think Naruto is? Ino said in a sad voice. He probably got lost, but don't worry QB is with him, he'll keep him safe Shikamaru pointed out. Here Ino come get something to eat Chaogi called. I'll wait for Naruto to get back she called not moving from the doorway. Everyone had eaten now and had found a room to sleep in and gone to bed. Except for Gara who was poking the fire and Ino who was still waiting at the door. Hey Gara Ino asked her voice still full of sadness. Gara continued to poke the fire but answered. Yes. Did Naruto really do what you said he did back at the village, has he become that strong? Yes, I have no reason to lie. Okay Ino was thinking even more of Naruto now and how far he had come. Gara, can I ask you another question? You just did, but yes you may ask another. Well how come you don't sleep? Gara sighed and stopped poking the fire. As you know I have a demon lord sealed inside of me. The one-tailed Shukaku, demon of the sand to be precise. He is the weakest of the demons, but still could take on any village. My demon is in a rage as a result of being sealed with a crazy priest. If I go to sleep Shukaku takes control and goes on a rampage, thus I cannot sleep, and besides the chakra from Shukaku replenishes me enough to keep me awake constantly, he started to poke the fire once he finished. So can someone fix the seal? So far I have found no one that is able to, but I am always looking. Well what about QB, he seems strong enough, and I am sure he could help Ino suggested. I will certainly ask him when he and Naruto return. Okay Gara, could you do me one last favor? Ino crept over to Gara and whispered something in his ear. I guess I could, I hope that Naruto doesn't get mad though Gara said as a room of sand on the top floor collapsed in on himself. Thanks a lot Gara Ino said as she gave him a hug. You are welcome, but Naruto will definitely be mad when here at speak of the devil, here they are now Gara walked to the door and Ino shot up and ran to the door. Naruto's jacket was off and his pants were torn a little bit, he was dragging a huge net full of fish, there was enough fish to feed them all for a week. Naruto what did you do? Ino yelled as she jumped onto Naruto giving him a bone crushing hug. Ino noticed Naruto's muscles and liked the feeling when he returned the hug. Well QB taught me a very old technique used to catch fish, it involves blocking the river with large stones that block a way for the fish to get by but allow enough for the water to continue through. You put your net over the rocks and wait. The fish naturally try to get over it and jump onto the rocks, which usually makes the injure themselves, and thus keeps them there. You then pull your net in and remove the rocks. Well what took you so long? A few missing nins stopped by and tried to take the fish, and I had to beat them around a bit in order to get them to leave. Naruto, where was QB, shouldn't a demon lord have been enough to stop them? Pesum demon lord he is, he's scared of rain, but here he comes now. Naruto's jacket was moving slowly along the ground until it reached the house, and QB jumped out of it and right into the middle of the fire. Ah that's much better, nice and warm. Feel better now wimpy fox, couldn't even help with the net. Naruto grumbled. Naruto and Ino both had their stew and talked with Gara over ordinary things. Well go to bed, I will watch the fish, Gara said as hand of sand from his gourd came and drug the net closer to the house. Sand then came and created a room around the fish, sealing it off completely except for a doorway from the house. Would love to, thanks Gara Naruto called as he stretched and yawned and walked to the other side of the room and turned back around. Hey um Gara, which room is empty? Naruto asked smiling. None. What well where am I supposed to sleep? Naruto called. But me Ino said as she grabbed his hand and drug him to her room. For all of you with impure thoughts that didn't do anything just shared a bed. Gara sighed as he walked back to the fire and saw QP laying down in it. QP. Yay. My seal is not working correctly and is not allowing me to sleep properly, I feel it is from the crazed priest that is sealed within me as well, is there anything I could do? QB stretched and stood up where is your seal? Gara lifted his shirt off and showed him the seal on his shoulder. QB jumped onto his head and looked down at it. 
Yay, the priest being sealed as well definitely did something wrong, but is easy to fix. This might sting a bit QB did a long set of hand seals and finished quickly. Dry elemental seal as QB thrust his paw onto the seal. R Winston Payne is a symbol of a fire, earth and water all appeared around his old seal in a triangle. There you go, the craze priest is subdued and locked away, and he is definitely not getting out. Shukaku may still be in a rage, so try to go to sleep, and if anything happens I will stop him okay. Okay and Gara laid down and started to drift asleep. QB jumped down and stood right in front of Gara as he went to sleep. QB closed his eyes and concentrated. Suddenly Gara shook violently, he then sprang up and opened his eyes, yet they weren't Gara's eyes they were the eyes of Shukaku. Gara sprung upright and sand began to swirl around him as he laughed diabolically. The me to o kill, wuuo Shukaku screamed. QB opened his eyes and spoke in a commanding voice. Shukaku incarnate of sand and guardian of the desert, I order to you to calm down and release your control over this boy. And why should I listen to you little fox? Because I am QB, the nine-tailed fox, and I am ordering you to stop. You lie, QB was much, much bigger, and you have nowhere near as much chakra as Lord QB. QB's chakra blazed from his small body, causing Shukaku to tremble in fear as everybody knew QB's chakra. You doubt me Shukaku? No Lord QB, I just haven't been sane lately from that priest, and I was so used to taking control and killing, I am sorry, please forgive me, Shukaku begged. Only if you never harm this boy again and help him train in his control of the sand. Yes, Lord QB I will. Thank you merciful Lord. Return to your cell, I need to speak with the boy again. Yes my lord and Shukaku released his hold over Gara, causing him to wake. Why do I have such a headache? Gara complained as he held his head. That is because I just a chat with Shukaku and he will no longer bother you at all, in fact he is now going to help you with training and better control over the sand. Really? That would be great, thank you very much QB Gara said as he bowed his head. No problem at all, just open up a bit more to people, they are your friends you know. I will try. Okay then go to sleep, oh and if you want to talk with Shukaku, then just think of being inside your head and speaking with a giant badger. Okay QB left the room, and Gara made a bed of sand that was comfortable for him and went to sleep. Man, what a terrible seal, he is lucky that Shukaku had not escaped completely, must have been his will that kept Shukaku at bay. QB spoke to no one as he looked at the sky. Ah, damn brat didn't give me enough chakra to last a night, oh well I'll tell him next time QB finished as he poofed into smoke. Next morning. Naruto was the first one to wake and walked into the living room to see Gara sleeping. Naruto thought nothing of it and went to get some fish for breakfast. Naruto walked into the fish room when Tamari entered the room and stumbled upon a sleeping Gara. Ah Tamari screamed out, causing Naruto to sprint back into the room. What is wrong Tamari? Naruto said while drawing a kunai from the floor. Gara is sleeping. Yay, and dot Naruto said dumbfounded as he lowered the kunai. You idiot, when he sleeps Shukaku takes control of him and goes on a rampage. Well, it doesn't look like that happened now does it, Shikamaru said before muttering something about troublesome women. What are you doing up you lazy bum? Tamari demanded. Well you damn screaming woke everybody in the house up. Kiba complained as he entered the room followed by everyone else. I'll get some more fish Naruto mumbled as he created some shadow clones to help him. Duechi made some fish cakes and everyone ate them and Naruto made some more clones to wash and clean the pans. Gara still had not woken up. Everyone by now had exited the house and was ready to go, but nobody dared wake Gara up for fear of his wrath. Well what are we going to do? He might not wake up for a while and stuff, and who knows if he can find us. Naruto answered. Well how is it that he went to sleep in the first place Shino stated. Oh yay, I told him to ask QB about Shukaku and all, maybe he knows. He no, Tamari and Kiba were all frustrated now. You knew that this whole time and never thought to mention it. Tamari screamed and Naruto was scared for his life, but luckily Tamari was being held back by Hinata and Ten Ten. Hey, well let's get the fox out here Naruto said as if nothing had happened at all. Summoning Jutsu. And a small puff of smoke erupted from his hand, but when it cleared it was not QB, but Gamakichi. Hey bro. Oh crap wrong one Naruto said scratching his head. Naruto Tamari was furious now. Alright I'll see you later bro. And Gamakichi disappeared. I'll get it right this time Naruto stepped back and did the jutsu again. This time QB emerged stretching and yawning. Hey kids what's up? What did you do to Gara Tamari screamed. Oh him, I put him to sleep. How, did you hurt him at all? No, I simply fixed his seal and calmed Shukaku. You mean you actually talked to Shukaku, is that even possible Kankuro asked. Of course it is you idiot, Naruto talks to me all the time, and I am talking to all of you, so don't you think it would be possible for him to do the same let alone me. QB snapped. 
Okay sorry Kankuro replied as he took shelter behind Tuechi. Anyway, Gar is fine, just resting from no sleep in a long time, just carry him with you, I'm sure Naruto wouldn't mind. No problem. So Naruto created 100 clones, 30 to help with Ichiraku supplies, and 10 to carry, Chaogi, Niji and the sleeping Gara. the rest got the fish. So how much longer is it to wave country Naruto? 1010 asked tired from the long trip. Actually I am not entirely sure how much farther it is, but I am sure this is the way Naruto hastily said not wanting to feel 1010's wrath. Why doesn't Niji or Hinata check with their Byukagan? Shino suggested. Everyone had noticed that Shino was talking more. I'll check, Niji is still injured, Hinata said as she made the seal used to use the Byukagan. Hinata saw trees and continued to look left, she came across a huge bridge that was in between the tree lines. It was straight ahead just too far to see by the normal eye. The bridge is just ahead, about one mile. Hinata stated. Okay then only about four miles to go, then Naruto said taking the lead again closely followed by Ino and the rest. Wait Naruto, if Hinata said the bridge is one mile ahead, how come you said four? Kiba asked thinking Naruto's math was wrong. Well, it's about a mile to the bridge, but the bridge itself is two miles long, and then a mile to Tazuna's village. Wow that is a large bridge, probably peaceful perfect place to watch the clouds, Shikamaru said in a joyful tone. The group continued until they got to the bridge. The bridge was very wide across, maybe 100 feet. On the left side of the bridge was a giant marble statue of Team 7 and gold-plated plaque. Naruto look it is you along with Team 7 Lee said stating the obvious. Thanks Lee Naruto said. Kiba approached the plaque and saw the name. What? The Great Naruto Bridge. How did you get a bridge named after you? Kiba said jealous because he doesn't have anything named after him, especially a huge bridge. Everyone looked at Naruto who just smiled and scratched the back of his head. Haha, uh -huh, it was our first C-class mission that turned A-class, and we had to fight off Zabuza Mamachi, Demon of the Mist and one of his companions. Kakashi almost died, and me and Sasuke had to free him. We then killed them on this bridge later on. Wait Zabuza as in Zabuza one of the seven swordsmen's of the mist? 1010 asked. Yea, the one and only. Did you get to see his sword, one of the heavenly swords? 1010 asked with stars in her eyes as she bombarded Naruto with questions about the sword. Um 1010, we buried Zabuza and Haku on the other side of the bridge, his sword should still be there, Naruto said, causing 1010 to stop her many questions. Okay, then let's go. 1010 demanded and all the guys instantly began moving, not wanting to attract 1010's or any of the girls' wrath. It took them about two minutes to cross the bridge because of all the stuff Naruto was carrying. When they arrived 1010 was looking at the graves of Zabuza and Haku and admiring Zabuza's sword. Wow, Naruto do you think I could touch it? Um, you would actually have to ask Tazuna Naruto said. Halt who goes there said a villager who emerged from the forest with about 20 others, they were only armed with spears and swords, although the swordsmen looked as if they held some reasonable skill from the way they carried themselves and their swords. Yea, we are here to see Tazuna 1010 said as she backed up towards the rest of the group. Why are you here and how do you know Tazuna? Another villager said. Our friend was here before and helped with the bridge and stuff, Shikamaru said stepping forward trying to avoid a battle. Shino pushed Naruto forward. Oh I see it is Naruto said the lead villager as they all lowered their weapons. Well, are we allowed to see Tazuna? Naruto asked. Yes right this way and they villagers led the way to the village. Um if I may ask, how was it that you knew we had crossed the bridge, you apparently do not look like ninja, and if you were that would be a huge task even for a powerful ninja. Shikamaru asked wishing to know their trick. Simple, there is a seal on the bridge that lets us know when someone is on the bridge. Well then, do you come here armed every time someone crosses? Shino said adjusting his glasses. No, the trick is the seal only alerts us if the bridge is being crossed by a number of people. The way we tell is the villagers are taught to cross in a single file, which the seal notices and stays inactive, when more than one person cross spread out, the seal alerts us, and we arm ourselves. The lead villager said proudly. If I may ask, that would be a very intricate seal, may I ask who did it? It was one of Naruto's friends, Jiraiya of the Sanin, he stopped by once, and he did it for us as a favor, saying that Naruto would return it someday. A villager stated. Damn it pervy sage Naruto grumbled. Ah here we are. The village was a lot bigger than last time. There was a simple wooden wall, that didn't look like it would hold out anything more than bandits and animals. There were many more houses, but they were all three floors or less. There was a large building that stood out in the middle, on it was the symbol for waves. The land around the wall was full of farmland and woods. The village looked very prosperous. When they entered the whole village was there to meet them. Tazuna was in the front with Inari and Tsunami at his sides. Naruto how are you it's been a while, hasn't it Tazuna's deep voice bellowed over the crowd. Tazuna, how are you? 
it is great to see you and your friends, but may I ask why you are carrying equipment and injured comrades? Tazuna said. Well we got fed up with our village and left, the damn council and villagers still hate me. Of course you can stay here. We all owe you a huge debt for helping us. Okay well we were sort of hoping to do more than just move here, Naruto asked laughing. And what is that? We wanted to start a new hidden village, the village hidden among the waves. Well that is up to the whole village not just me, Tazuna said as he turned to his villagers. The villagers talked about it for a minute and they finally reached an answer of yes and told Tazuna. Well then it settled besides, that would make us known and increase our economy more, although I am hoping you all have the manpower to do that, I hope you have thought it out, Naruto Tazuna said smiling. Well not really, but that is what Shikamaru and Shino are for. I am just the manpower and fighter Naruto said smiling. Ah, and Nara, have not seen one of them in a while, Tazuna said as he inspected Shikamaru and then on to the rest. Wow Naruto, you really have a powerful group here, I mean you have two Hayugas, an Abram, Akamichi, Inuzuka, and I'm not sure if Blondie is a Yamanaka, but they have the same color hair. Tazuna said as he inspected all of them. How do you know all of this Tazuna? Shino stated. I am a master bride builder, which means I had to be great at small details, that and I traveled a lot, so I know the distinct clans. Wow Ice, you are smarter than you look Kiba said. Aha I am, last time I was drunk you know Tazuna said. After everyone had met and talked with the villagers and moved into town, Naruto asked Azuna a serious question. Okay then, when do we start? Tomorrow, you can start on the food and security, and Shino and Shikamaru can help me design the walls and more important buildings, don't worry about money, we are very rich now, maybe more than some of the hidden villages. Bam, wave country was perfect Naruto screamed out, and everyone smiled at Naruto as he jumped forward, everyone following. Everybody was gathered outside the village center, and Tazuna was up on stage with Naruto and Shikamaru. The rest of the rookies were below in the first row. All of the wave villagers were gathered and standing waiting to hear Tazuna's speech. Naruto was smiling very happy, looking at all of the people. Tazuna took a deep breath before starting. Welcome, all of the citizens of wave, applause yesterday, we were greeted by an old friend from before we were finished out magnificent bridge. And he has brought some of his friends. They are ninja, ninja from the village hidden in the leaves applause. They are here because there was an incident in their village in which they felt they were mistreated from a mission in which they completed but ridiculed for doing it from the villagers. They have decided to break off all ties with their old village and are now here asking asylum. The applause not only though do they wish to stay, but they wish to help us create a new village, one that is on par with the other five ninja villages, by now the whole crowd was being roused and their cheering increased as Tazuna grew near the end of his rant. I wish to create with all of you, a better place for us all, the village hidden in the waves. Tazuna finished with a smile from ear to ear. The crowd took a whole five minutes to calm down and stop their cheering. When they finished Tazuna turned towards Naruto while still at the microphone. I give to you the hero of wave, Naruto Uzumaki Tazuna said as he stepped back leaving the stage to Naruto. This time everyone jumped and cheered louder than when Tazuna was speaking. Hello everyone, how are you? Naruto said before taking a deep breath and starting again. Well like Tazuna said, we were hoping to start a hidden village here. But we may need your help on questions and other things, like location of housing and teaching us the area and anything special. Also you won't have to do any construction, but if there is anyone with any building experience or any skills that we are going to be doing just let one of us know and we will see what you can help with ok. Naruto finished grinning and scratching his head. The crowd cheered and Naruto smiled more. I have one more thing. I would like you to meet one of my friends, he has agreed to be the guardian of wave as well. Trust me when you meet him you will fear nothing. Also do not worry I have complete control over him. The crowd was confused and the old Kanoha ninja were smiling for they knew what was coming. Naruto jumped up into the air and bit his thumb. Summoning Jutsu. The all too familiar huge cloud of smoke erupted from Naruto's hand. QB stepped down and quickly maneuvered his paws so he didn't crush any of the village. He let out a huge roar and looked down at the crowd. My name is QB, the nine-tailed fox, and I am asking to be your guardian if you agree. QB bowed his head to the ground in front of the crowd. The crowd was speechless, and then a young child began speaking looky mommy big foxy, and she waddled over to QB's jaw and began to pet his nose. So soft mommy. QB then poofed back to his small two-tailed form in a cloud of smoke. The little girl then gave QB a huge hug. This caused all the other girls to join in petting him. Naruto help me, I don't think I am going to make it this time. Naruto just laughed and stepped down from the stage and stood next to Ino, who leaned against him and gave him a hug. Good speech Naruto. Thanks. Azuna stepped back to the microphone. We will start construction and any changes tomorrow, so prepare for better times ahead. The crowd cheered one last time and began to disperse. 
The young ninja gathered on the stage to talk again with Tazuna. So Brett you ready to start? Tazuna said. Of course I am. I'm always ready Naruto said raising his hand into the air. Alright then, Shikamaru, Niji and Shino you guys are with me, we have to get something planned to keep Naruto busy tomorrow, I don't think Ino can handle him, Tazuna said as he began to walk towards his house. Yay, we definitely can't have him getting bored and messing everything up Shikamaru said. I'm not that bad Naruto pouted. Don't worry I'll watch him, Ino said as she drug Naruto towards the edge of town, followed closely by QB who had escaped from the massive girls. Fiba raised his head and hand ready to say something, but never finished from the look Hinata gave him. So what now? Tamari asked. Well I say while the two smart guys are planning we go check out the beach Ten Ten suggested. Sure who's in? Kiba said jumping in excitement with Akamaru. Everyone raised their hands except for Gara, who said something about making the house again first. Oh no you don't you are coming with us this time Gara. Tamari said as she quickly grabbed him by the collar. You can make sandcastles and you won't have to get wet. After Tamari said this Gara's eyes quickly lit up and he picked everybody up with a mass of sand. Um wait, don't we need swimsuits? Hinata said causing everybody to stop and think about it. The girl smiled, but the guys all began to back away, but each were stopped by some girl. Shopping the girls screamed out and the guys cringed. They all knew that they needed some clothes for their stay so they went. Does anyone have any money though? Chaogi asked. Everyone stopped and looked down. Yes it will have to wait Chaogi replied. Not to worry Gara has plenty of money he keeps within his gourd Tamari said giving Gara an evil smile. Fine, but you can't take me with you shopping. All the guys were jealous because Gara had found a way out. Stop and get me at the sand house before you go Gara said as he backed away. No just meet us at the beach Tamari called back. Fine. Sneaky lucky bastard Kiba grumbled. Well we gotta go then Chaogi said as he drew a bag of chips from his clothing. Boo, let's go Ten Ten screamed as they each drug a guy behind them. Edge of forest. Ino and Naruto were walking through the forest. Ino decided to make a move and grabbed his hand. Naruto looked to Ino, and she just smiled and moved closer, which caused them to walk at a slower pace. So Naruto, do you really think we can be on par with the other five major villages? Ino asked. Of course, especially since we will have new students to teach. We will skip most of the boring history stuff, just teach them about the major villages, and then write to chakra and ninja skills. That would give us ninja quicker and make them more powerful at a younger age. Exactly. So Naruto what do you think of you? Hey kids, hope you aren't doing anything naughty QB said as he jumped onto Naruto's other shoulder. Hey why you you be no growled out, but thankfully for QB Naruto gave her hand a squeeze, which calmed her down. Ahahaha, that was funny, well anyway, I am going to give you each a gift. I am going to teach you two as well as one other in an elemental style. Fire, earth, water, the three main elements. Yes I know about lightning and wind, but they are minor elements just like grass and wood and so on. So who's getting what? Naruto asked. Well brat, you are getting fire, dangerous and unpredictable, girlfriend over there is water, graceful but deadly, and the third person is. Lee Naruto answered. How did you know? He has the best speed, stamina and body of us, except when I use your power. Naruto pointed out. Yay, imagine Lee with more strength and power Ino said. Whoa, that's scary. Exactly, and I also suggest that you create a ranking system that will be unique to this village, making it known across the ninja world, such as the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. So what do you have in mind? Naruto asked. Actually nothing. Oh great idea, there QB. Well what about colors, something simple Ino said. Naruto and QB looked to Ino. Simple, just like ninja ranks except colors instead, like red for Kage, blue for Jounin, and so on. Well that could work, Naruto is red, all of the old leaf ninja that came with you is blue, and then so on down the list, also you could have black for recon and assignation, and white for support and elemental or something, nice idea. Naruto smiled and leaned on Ino who was resting her head on Naruto's shoulder. So when do we start? Naruto asked his voice eager. Well first I am going to demonstrate. QB said as he jumped down and a smoke cloud engulfed him. When it cleared there stood an older looking man who stood about 6'4", he had a long red beard and long hair that stretched to his lower back. He was wearing black robes that had a sash that was the color of his hair. He was standing up straight for an old man and had a cane, but it didn't look like he was leaning on it. His eyes were red with black slits, and he had pointed teeth. Whoa, you look better as a fox Naruto said snickering. I'll have you know I look really good for 10,000 years QB replied happily. Wow you are really old Eno stated. Shut up. Naruto and Ino couldn't hold it in anymore and started laughing. After five minutes they finished and QB decided it was his turn to have some fun. Okay now that you two lovebirds are done. 
This caused Ino and Naruto to blush I will demonstrate the styles. QB got into a simple position with his right arm forward and his left bent slightly. His feet were spread equally from each other. He closed his eyes and stayed like this for a few seconds. Higher champion QB said as he opened his eyes. His hands and feet were immediately engulfed in a burning flame. He demonstrated by striking a tree with a weak punch. The punch created a hole through the tree and the entire tree went up in flames. This style is extremely powerful and can only be countered by water or earth. The balance between the elements keeps one from becoming too powerful if anyone ever becomes corrupt. Thus they are always given in pairs of three. By the way no one has been given these powers in over 3000 years. And you guys are lucky, you are also the youngest to get these powers. QB then struck a tree with a water element activated and a waterfall sprang forth from the air and a perfectly round hole was through the tree. For earth he punched another tree the entire tree shook and then shattered into billions of tiny splinters. Wow they are that powerful. Naruto asked, starting to drool a little. Yep and the best part is there is no learning. What then why doesn't everybody use it? Because you must be given the seal of the respectful elemental. So that's how it's done, you are granted a seal which grants you control of the element and then you just have to master it. Naruto figured out. Right, so do you want them now? Of course. Well there is one problem though QB said as his voice lowered with each word. What, we can't get it yet, there is an order, do you have to be a certain age? No, no nothing like that it's just the seal has to be placed over your heart. So go ahead Naruto yelled taking off his shirt. Well you're not the problem. Oh I see now, well that is a problem, Naruto said scratching his head. I don't care, but so help me god if you do anything more than the method for placing the seal, you will die, immortal or not, Ino growled out in a voice so vile that it made QB flinch for a second. I promise I will not do anything more than what is required Ino QB said as he raised his right hand. Well let's get started. Okay Ino first, and I suggest you hold Naruto's hand. Naruto grabbed Ino's right hand with his and stood by her side. Here goes QB once again closed his eyes and concentrated. Sacred elemental gift. Water. QB's right hand grew a bright blue. A flowing ball of water gathered around his palm, the area around them became mistier, and the ground beneath their feet became wet with water that flowed around their feet. QB thrust his hand to Eno's heart. All of the moving water stopped and returned to the flowing ball around QB's hand. The seal bearing all five elements appeared, with water in the middle and the four others surrounding the water symbol. Ino was screaming out in pain, and she squeezed Naruto's hand harder. After a minute the water around QB's hand dispersed and the area returned to normal. Ino fell backwards but was caught by Naruto. QB fell down onto his butt. Man I forgot how much that takes out of me, I think I can give you yours Naruto, but Lee's will have to wait for a couple hours. That's fine, let's keep it a surprise Naruto grinned as he laid Ino down and walked back over to QB who stood back up. Just so you know I did Eno's first because hers is the least painful of the three. You got the most painful. Hehehe. <laughs> Gee thanks. Okay here we go again. Naruto closed his eyes and braced himself. Sacred elemental gift. Fire. This time QB's right hand grew a vibrant red that sun turned into a burning flame that engulfed his hand. The temperature rose a couple degrees and the earth beneath their feet cracked and steam and molten rock spewed forth. QB once again thrust his hand to Naruto's heart. Screams from Naruto were heard over the spewing earth and hissing steam. He screamed out in pain as the seal appeared on his chest, it seemed to be burnt on rather than through chakra. Again a seal with the five elements appeared with fire in the center, and the others circled around. When QB retracted his hand he put his hands on his knees and was panting. Naruto was lying back on the ground out of breath, and Ino was still unconscious. Well have fun Brad, don't summon me for an hour unless it is important, I need to rest too you know, and once QB finished he returned to his cell inside Naruto through a cloud of smoke. Naruto crawled over to Ino and laid his head on her stomach and went to sleep. But the others. Thank god Kiba said as he walked out of the store arms full of bags. Akamaru we're done. It wasn't that bad we were only 4 hours Tamari stated as if that wasn't a long time. Shishu guys complained too much 1010 remarked. How is it that Naruto escaped this? I mean his clones could have done all the work, and. Kiba was stopped from talking by Chaogi who put his hand over Kiba's mouth. Don't tell them that idiot Kankuro said. Yay, his clones, Henge, us free, get the picture. Chaogi said as he released Kiba. Ooh, I see now Kiba said chuckling. Well what are we waiting for let's go to the beach, Tamari said jumping. Fine let's go Hinata said as she grabbed her bag with her swimsuit in it and ran ahead. Hey what about Naruto? I will get them. We will meet you at the beach. Lee exclaimed as he sprinted off kicking up dust. Meet you there Lee Kiba called. But Naruto and Ino. Ino woke with a weight on her chest. She looked down to see a ball of yellow. 
Naruto, you wimpy no managed laughing lightly. She gently shook Naruto, and he awoke with a big yawn. He looked up to see Ino smiling at him. Naruto smiled back and then realized where his head was and began to get up, but was stopped by Ino's hand, who moved him from her stomach to her lap as she sat up. Well I guess we are a lot stronger now, Naruto Ino said running her hands though his hair. Yeah I guess we should try it out. Naruto said again trying to stand up, but Ino stopped him. No that stuff can wait, let's just sit here Ino pleaded. Sounds good, besides we should wait for Lee anyway Naruto replied. I'm glad you thought of that, because you wouldn't be moving anyway Ino stated matter of factly. They stayed like this for a couple minutes with Ino running her hand through Naruto's hair. Hey Naruto. Yay. You know I am kind of glad that you left to start this village. Why is that? Because it gives us more opportunities and I get to spend time with you she said smiling down at him. Me too. Hey Ino. Yay. How come you are spending time with me and stuff? Naruto asked dumbfounded. Ino blushed and bonked him on the head. Because you idiot, I love you. What Naruto asked confused as he had never been in this situation before. Ino having known this from seeing Naruto grow up when they were younger, so she did the only thing that she could think of. She leaned down and kissed him. When she broke the kiss Naruto looked back and then smiled. The idiot Ino said, then kissed him again. Eventually Ino wound up on top of Naruto kissing him as Naruto had his hands on her back. It was as this time that Lee found them. Naruto, Ino we are all going to the beach and. Ahhh I am sorry for interrupting. Ino rolled off of Naruto and stood up quickly followed by Naruto. Sorry about that Lee, kind of forgot about everyone else Naruto chuckled. That is fine Naruto, but anyway the rest of us except for Shikamaru and Shino are going to the beach outside of town. I was sent to find you and tell you about it, now that I have finished I must go Lee turned to leave, but was stopped by a shout from Naruto. Wait Lee, we got something to tell you. Well QB is giving us the power of the elements, I got water, Naruto got fire, and you are getting earth. And besides, you don't have to learn anything it's just mastery of you control of the element and ability to use it to your advantage. Naruto said. Yay, QB gave us some kind of special seal that gives us it, so we are going to get QB to give you your seal, and then the three of us are going to be training to master it. Ino said. This is wonderful, thank you, thank you, this will help so much Lee yelled out. Naruto put his hand on Lee's shoulder Lee, this will probably make us the three strongest in this village, you are going to be my right hand man, so be ready, and if you could not as much yelling. He pleaded. Thank you, thank you Lee exclaimed again. Okay, let me get QB summoning Jutsu. The poof of smoke and there stood the human looking QB. Ah, Lee, are you ready? Yes, QB. Okay, take off your shirt. Lee complied and stood there with his eyes closed. QB closed his eyes and waited. Sacred elemental gift. Earth QB's hand became encased in a layer of rock. The ground beneath them broke into millions of pieces and swirled under their feet. Lee was not screaming just grunting and clenching his fists. The seal appeared above his heart and QB retracted his hand. Lee put his hands on his knees. Wow, I can already feel the earth beneath my feet, almost as if it is talking to me. Lee exclaimed. Ha, ah, well looks like you three are already started. Now give me some time to rest brat QB set and disappeared after he finished. Okay well let's get to the beach boys Eno yelled grabbing both of their hands and dragging them along. At the beach. The group had just arrived and the girls went to change. The boys were waiting for the girls so they could go in the water. Hey guys Kiba barked out. Yay, what now Chowgi whined. I got a volleyball set Kiba said grinning as he pulled it out from one of the numerous bags. When did you get that? Kankuro asked. When I said I was going to the bathroom, I snuck into the sporting store and snagged one as well as a couple of frisbees. Kiba boasted out as he began to open the volleyball set. Nice one, now let's get this up before they get back and want to go do something stupid Chowgi encouraged setting down his chips and helping with the net. In five minutes the girls had returned to see the boys bumping the volleyball around to themselves and the net to the side of them. Where did you get that? Ten Ten replied happily as she knew that she would win at volleyball. Not telling, and no we can't play yet because we need Naruto to at least give us a chance, so let's go in the water first, Kiba said back as he set the volleyball down and sprinted to the water with Akimaru. Wait where is Gara? he said he was coming to Mari demanded. Well let's see maybe the big ass castle made of sand over there isn't a hint Kankuro mocked. They all looked over to see Gara sitting atop a four story high castle made of sand with a courtyard on the top where Gara was making smaller sand castles. Hey Gara, want to come in the water? Tamari screamed to him. Gara just looked up and then down as sand formed into a no and then dissipated. Come on everybody Tamari said as she grabbed Hinata and Ten Ten and drove them to the water. Whoa the water is great, Kiba said as he was swimming away from Akimaru. They all made it into the water and were splashing each other and were messing around. 
Hey Kiba come here Kankuro called. Kiba swam over to him and Kankuro whispered something in his ear. Okay, let's do it Kankuro said as he and Kiba slipped under the water unnoticed. The girls were all ganging up on Chaogi who was fighting back as best he could but was still losing until Kankuro and Kiba made their presence known. Tamari and Tenten both went down under the water courtesy of the two boys. Kankuro and Kiba both surfaced and grabbed Hinata by her arms and legs. They tossed her up high in the air and she let out an eep, but in her descent, she straightened right into a perfect dive and slipped down under the water without making any waves at all. Ah Kankuro maybe this was a bad idea, Kiba whispered as they eyed the three girls who had surfaced looking at them with daggers. Kiba and Kankuro began to back away and Chaogi had escaped to the beach. God please help us Kiba pleaded. You both are going to get it now, Tamari growled out as she, Hinata, and Tent and advanced on them. We are going to die Kankuro whined. Yes you are Tamari never finished as something hit the water and a huge plash was left in its place that stopped the girls from attacking and saved the boys. Thank you God Kiba called to the sky. Everyone looked at the spot of the splash and waited. Eventually Naruto popped back up smiling. That was awesome, I am doing it again, Naruto exclaimed as he hurriedly swam back to the shore. What are you talking about Naru? Ten Ten asked but was again interrupted by another splash though not as large as the other one. Hi girls Eno said as she surfaced. What happened to you and why are you being thrown through the air? Oh that, well look to the shore, Eno said as she started to swim around. When they looked to the shore they saw about 30 clones standing there with a large sheet and Lee was lying in the middle of it. One. Two. Three and the clones threw Lee through the air who only went about 20 feet and never made it to the water. Lee turned to the clones who were all panting. Lee maybe you should take off your weights, we can't throw you with them on, you weigh too much the real Naruto said. Okay, that will work I guess. Lee took off his weights and set them down on the ground where they immediately created a crater. Wow Lee, a little much you think. Not at all, it is almost time for me to move up another 100 pounds, Lee exclaimed as he got back onto the sheet to try again. Let's do this again, one. Two. Three and this time Lee was sent soaring through the air waving his arms frantically and when he reached the water, he created a splash that was bigger than the others. Lee came back up and looked around only to see that no one was there and they were all gathered on the beach. Lee quickly made his way back to the shore. The clones continued to throw people until they were out of energy and disappeared. So Naruto more clones. Eno pleaded. Sure but let's try everyone at once he exclaimed. Sure. So Naruto created 50 clones this time and everyone got onto the sheet. Wait I got an even better idea, Naruto said chuckling evilly. He created 120 more clones and 20 morphed into an even larger sheet. The new set of clones grabbed this sheet and the old set got on top of this sheet. So the real people were on top of a sheet held by clones who were on top of a sheet held by clones. Are you sure about this Naruto? Tamari asked not liking the new idea. The yeah, it will be even better, and besides we are going into the water so it won't really hurt much, Naruto said getting ready. We will be all the way up in the air you idiot Ino bonked him on the head. She then scooted over to him and grabbed his hand. Hinata also moved closer to Kiba. Naruto began the countdown. 3 2. 1. Go. The clones on the first level tossed their sheet and then dispersed themselves. They all flew through the air up to about 200 feet. Then the next level of clones tossed the real ninja in the air. They flew up to about 500 feet. Ino had wrapped her arms around Naruto as they were in the air. Hinata was also holding on to Kiba's back. Damari and Ten Ten had grabbed each other and Kankuro was spinning wildly. Lee was doing a cannonball waiting for the water. All the while the girls are screaming. They hit the water and a huge splash followed. When they surfaced all of them were laughing their heads off. Wow that was great Naruto Tamari said. Yea the rest of them said. Yea, so who is up for volleyball? Kiba asked. So everyone made their way back to the beach and was standing around waiting. So what are the teams? Ino asked. Well of course it is boys versus girls, Tamari replied getting into her spot in the back. Wait it will be 4 versus 5 Kankuro snapped back. I'll sit out, I think I am going to go make a castle with Gara Chaogi said sitting out. All right then let's get it on 10 10 said wanting to start. Okay, Naruto shouted. No ninja skills this game Ino said. Hi and everyone chorused. Then 10 served the ball to Naruto who bumped it to Kiba who hit it up high in the air for Lee. I got it Lee said as he jumped up high, Ino and Tamari both jumped up to block it and they sent it back at Lee who had no choice but to let it hit him in the chest. The ball was falling through to the floor, Kenkuro dove and saved it and Naruto hit it back. The rest of the game went on until the girls finally won by two points. Okay, now we are using ninja skills right? Naruto asked jumping up and down. Sure Naruto Ino said back at him sticking her tongue out. Okay serve Akiba called. 
Then Ten served it to Kankuro who stood there until the ball almost hit the floor, a puppet popped up from the ground and bumped it up to the other puppet who smacked it at the girls. Tamari whipped out her fan and flung the ball back, this time it went to Kiba. Kiba transformed Akamaru into a clone of himself and waited for the ball to get to the right height. Kiba bumped the ball up to Akamaru cloned as him who began their favorite move. Akamaru used a piercing fang rushing the ball back and scoring. The game continued with everyone using their ninja skills. Eventually the girls came out on top winning 18 to 10, thanks to 10 10 chucking kunai at anyone who went for the ball. Damn it, we aren't going to win with 10 10's kunai and weapons Kiba said. Don't worry I got it covered, just play normal, you won't even see the kunai Naruto called getting ready. You sure about that Naruto? Ino called back slyly. Yep. Okay serve a dog boy Tamari said, wanting to get the cane over. Kiba served the ball over the net and the girl simply bumped it back, Lee was getting ready to hit it when 10 10 threw her kunai. Mass shadow clones Naruto called out making a wall of shadow clones that stopped the girls from seeing and any kunai thrown were deflected back. This continued until the boys caught up and were only down one, the score being 18-17. I know what to do girl Zeno said as she walked up to the front of the net and began her family jutsu. Valentine jutsu. Inside Naruto's head. Ino entered Naruto's mind. She saw Naruto standing there waiting. Hi Naruto, sorry B we can't lose to you, Ino said as she walked over to Naruto and looked him in the eyes. Well that might work if that was me the real Naruto called as he appeared behind Ino. What are you talking about, if that is you then who is this she said as she turned back to the first Naruto. Hey Ino how are you? QB said as the first Naruto transformed into his human form. So what are you going to do? Ino said as she backed away from the two boys that were slowly advancing on her. Simple, I am going to keep you here until the boys win QB smiled as he stepped in between the real Naruto and Ino. Sigh in a few minutes, honey Naruto mocked at Ino. She tried to run at Naruto, but was stopped by a hand from QB. Sorry Ino you aren't going back yet. Want to bet? Ino said as she swiped at QB who ducked under the punch and smacked Ino in the back of the head with his cane. It didn't hurt much just felt like little smack. Ino tried again and again to get out, but each time missed and was struck by QB. She attempted a roundhouse kick to his face, and QB ducked and hit her in the back. Ino fell to the ground and stood right back up in the same position as before. Ino you won't hit me, so please just wait. No, I am not going to lose to Naruto she yelled as she aimed a kick this time at his feet. QB sighed and simply changed to his nine-tailed fox form and wrapped Ino up in his tails. See now this could have been a lot easier you know QB said laying his head down to rest. Arg Naruto you are going to get it Ino said trying to break free. Back at volleyball. Naruto came back and told them that Ino was out for the rest of the game, so Naruto moved her out of the way. They then continued the game. The boys won thanks to Naruto's army covering the floor keeping the ball from touching it. After the boys won QB released Ino from Naruto's mind, once she entered her body, she got up and hit Naruto over the head. Jeter was all she said as she walked next to him. We won Kiba yelled as he and Kankuro jumped around. Crispy time? Kiba asked. I'm in Naruto stated. Ino, Ten Ten and Tamari also said they were in. The rest went back into the water. Kiba tossed the frisbee to Akamaru jumped and caught it in his mouth and flipped through the air and landed on all fours. Naruto was trying to catch frisbees from the three girls who were ganging up on him. Will you slow down, this isn't fair, Naruto said catching frisbees and throwing them back while trying to keep them from hitting his face until he summoned a couple of clones to help him out. After a couple minutes the rest of the group had returned from the water and everyone packed up ready to leave. Yay, yay, let's go back now Tamari said, upset that Naruto and his clones had beat them again. Fine, let me get Gara and Chaogi Kankuro said as he rushed off to tell them. The group was walking back to a clearing at the edge of town where Gara would build his sand house. Hey, we need a name, since we can't be the Kanoha 12 Kiba said. How about the wave 13 10 10 asked. It will work for now I guess Naruto complained. It will be fine Kiba Ino said. They arrived at the spot again and Gara made the sand house again. They all entered and Lee went to find Tuechi and AM and tell them where the house was, as well as getting Niji, Shikamaru, and Shino from Tazuna's house. Ino once again drug Naruto into a room for themselves, and Ten Ten, AM and Tamari bunked together with Hinata in a larger room. Kiba, Kankuro and Lee were going to share a room, and so were Niji, Shino and Shikamaru, Tuechi had a room to himself. Naruto summoned QB and let him sleep in the living room with Gara. this time he returned to his two-tailed form and laid down in the fire after Gara started one. They all went to sleep looking forward to the first day of building their new village. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do please leave a like share and subscribe also don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then see you in next video.